So you are now in a position of leadership. Mm -hmm. What do you think it takes to you say, hey, you want to build a team, you got to hire, you got to put people mm -hmm. around you. What's like one important quality of someone who's going to be in a leadership position? Yeah. Who's going to have people on yeah. their team? What do you have to do? Do you have to never, never, never ask people to do anything you're not willing to do? I'll make a call if I need to. I'll go to, go to a meeting if I need to. We'll work I'll shoot a you. video if I need to. Like, yeah. like that type of um, of trust and uh, and, and respect. I'm in with you. Yeah. It it it. it people aren't working for you, they're working with you. Yeah. And, and I think that that's really important. And for me, it's important that people, like, I, like our, our, we have a really aggressive environment and we push really hard and we're good. I came into your office, yeah. people are clapping, people are yeah. screaming, there's Ric Flair's happening. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> there's just, there's a lot, there's a lot that we push on because we have a lot going on. And, yeah. and it, it can, I know how it makes me feel sometimes, you know, like I wish I could say I was all in every day and I'm not. And so like, when I'm not, what do I need? I need to have people there that are supportive. I need to have people there that are in the same mission, that they're, they're encouraging, like, and they can help like grab me when I'm, when I'm not feeling it. And so, you know, I think as a leader, you have a responsibility to, to create that environment for your people and take care, you know, take, take um, interest in people and what's important to them and, and, and make sure that, that you're not only just providing them a job, but also a vehicle to get what they want. As we're here with Jared Glant, My man. the VP of Cardone Enterprises, mm -hmm. the host of the Young Hustler Show. Yeah, hey man, thanks for coming on. The Dude, show. I appreciate you, man. It's so good to be here. I, I love hanging around you. Like, he, the, like. I think when I first met you, I was like, "Dude, this is a cool dude." And I didn't even meet you face to face. I just met you. I think I saw a course that I that okay, you, that you right had done, on. and I was like, "This is a cool dude right here." And then and then uh, your slogan is like. Uh, to serve unselfishly and profit. That's the like, goal. That's a description. That's what totally, dude. And, and I'm like, what a what a solid like point right there. And you you are the epitome of that. Like, thank you. S serve people, have a great attitude, be super chill, and make money. Yeah, love and it. That is what happens yeah. when you do that. Now I want to put the attention on you. I appreciate you telling me I'm awesome. Thank you. But <laughs> I have a question for you. So you like manage a lot of ongoing process. There's mm -hmm. so much stuff going on. You guys are putting on the biggest event ever yeah. in our industry. You're selling uh, info products and books. You're selling training to organizations Company, on how to sell yeah. better. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you effectively manage so many projects? Is it just like big team or is it like you go deep on one at a time? I don't know if I have the answer to that yet because <laughs> I don't like, think I effectively manage the projects it, it, it yet. It seems to be working. But it just, it's, it's a lot of like managed chaos, you know, like, we, we believe that, you know, people either take action or they don't and or they're slow to take action. So, you know, you can either take action fast and create a bunch of problems sure. or you can take action really slow and create a bunch of problems. Right. You just need to determine what problems that you want to deal with. Absolutely. The problems from trying to do a lot and having a lot going on and a lot of stuff getting done or the problems from, you know, failing yeah. to launch, you yeah. know, like and, in, in, you know, spending all your time in planning and prep and never actually doing anything. So, you know, we create, we move from idea to money really fast. We pre-sell products before they're sold. You sure. know, we, we run before we know what's on the other side of the wall. Like, you, you know, so we've... Just make it happen. Yeah, and, and, and a lot of people are, are too calculating and, and they, they, um, they probably don't do a lot. They probably rob themselves of a lot of productivity because they're, they just, they're afraid to just... Put it Get in out play, yeah. and you got to put a team around you too. You know, you got to hire people. You know, the laptop lifestyle sounds great, but if you want to build a big company, you got to hire people, and you have to have staff, and got to buy know. help. Yeah. So, right on. Um, you just did this event. Mm -hmm. How many people were there? Thirty-four. We sold thirty-four thousand four hundred and forty tickets. Forty, forty, yeah. forty-one. For a yeah. business education event, mm -hmm. which is kind of I've not. Okay, maybe there are other out there, but that's huge. Yeah. So, what was your favorite part of that? thing i mean maybe a favorite let me part. just tell you okay so like a like selfishly yeah that's what i want selfishly my favorite part about the entire event was on day one at like 9 30 a.m all the seats were sold that we were going to sell everybody was registered and <laughs> checked like, in for I the can, event it and it was second. like <laughs> could breathe because it was before that it was probably like two and a half months of of Nightmares, like legit, yeah. like I mean, t like not, like we, when we had like eighteen, twenty thousand seats sold, I was having nightmares about the place being empty, and I'm like, dude, we already have tickets <laughs> sold, like people are gonna show up, like, 
So so it's this massive like brain drain. And, but, the, uh, and events, you know, the 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 risk tolerance, the overhead, the the contract with the venue. I mean, getting pe committing to it and then trying to get people in those seats. That yeah. is like scary. We used to do 500 person events and we decided, you know what? We don't like the event model. <laughs> We'd rather sell physical products. Yeah, it's just, it's it's hard. It, but it, it, you know, it gives our community something that they really want. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, and, and then we, we, you know, had Snoop Dogg there this year and Little John. And Some celebrities. So, so, you know, we're trying to make it, you know, uh, a big platform stage, you know, like the the keynote presentation I never have versus. I more followers in one speech than when I spoke on that stage. Yeah. The biggest jump in yeah visibility i've ever had as a and presenter. and you you know you teach something we we can we can speak to a really broad audience so we try to focus on like you know sales and entrepreneurship and then marketing and then execution creating the ideal life taking what you're learning and then doing something with it and uh, so that opens us up to a lot of different people that we can bring in and have speak and share and and so um but anyways, it's just it's it's a it's a lot of work. The my favorite selfish part is when <laughs> when it's when I'm realized that like it's okay, we're good. Um, Let me ask you this: a little bit of a change of subject, which yeah. is, you know, your um, career path, if mm -hmm. you will, is you kind of started from the bottom. Now you hit. You yep. know what I mean? You started like yep. in a position in that company uh -huh. that was not a leadership position. Yeah. And you are now in a leadership position. Uh -huh. What do you think? Uh, why? Why? How, why you? How? What did you do? Why were you able to do that? You know what I mean. And there were some people that were that came in before me that that it just didn't yeah. it just didn't work out for. So, um, you know, I grew up. My dad was a, a manager in a in a business, and and he you know general manager. So I always had a perspective of seeing all the problems and um, you know kind of understanding the the things that he was talking about and so like just being exposed to those conversations it always made me think like that and so you know i worked really hard and i always thought like and made decisions like it was my business yeah. and took ownership of it yeah nothing no problem was ever too small you know no customer was ever you know ever too low a value like you know and just focus on delivering and i believe in what we're doing and so i think when you kind of com combine all those things and you know, you keep showing up over and over and over again and doing the right things, like, it, it, it starts working out. And uh, and so Grant was like, you know, I can trust this guy. He's he's doing the right things by me and my business, you know, and, and so it allows him to, Let's bring him up. you know, kind of go up and over. And now he's, you know, raised $145 million for the equity fund so awesome. on social media without <laughs> spending a dollar on advertising. Unprecedented. And you just opened it up, right, to like non-accredited, mm -hmm. Yeah, and so it's like everybody, all the big investment guys in, in his space are, are like. How, how did you do that? How <laughs> What's going this? on? Yeah, like. Um, let me ask you this. Uh, so you are now in a position of leadership. Mm -hmm. What do you think it takes to, you said, hey, you want to build a team, you got to hire, you got to put people mm -hmm. around you. What's like one important quality of someone who's going to be in a leadership position? Yeah. Who's going to have people on yeah. the team? What do you have to do? Do you have to. Never, never, never ask people to do anything you're not willing to do. I'll make a call if I need to. I'll go do, go do a meeting if I need to. We'll I'll shoot a you. video if I need to. Like, yeah. like that type of um, of trust and uh, and, and respect. I'm in it with you. Yeah. It, it it it. People aren't working for you; they're working with you. Yeah. And and I think that that's really important. And for me, it's important that people like I like our our we have a really aggressive environment and we push really hard and we're good. Came into your office, yeah. people are clapping, people are yeah. screaming. There's Ric Flair's happening. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's <laughs> just there's a lot there's a lot that we push on because we have a lot going on and yeah. and it, it can I know how it makes me feel sometimes. You know, like I wish I could say I was all in every day and I'm not. And so like when I'm not, what do I need? I need to have people there that are supportive. I need to have people there that are in the same mission that they're they're encouraging like and they can help like grab me when I'm when I'm not feeling it and so you know I think as a leader you have a responsibility to to create that environment for your people and take care you know take take um, interest in people and what's important to them and 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 make sure that that you're not only just providing them a job but also a vehicle to get what they want yeah totally paying attention to where they are and where they want to go yeah one of the things we do with our sales guys is we make them go through and actually write out like what their long-term goals are like we have this whole like goal setting session where it's like not just writing your goals down but like figuring out like really defining what they are like yeah. you know I'm gonna make a million bucks a year yeah for what Totally. Well, because Why? I want to buy a house. What kind of house? A big house. How big? Biggest one on the block. What block? <laughs> like, like getting down so they can actually like visualize what they really want. 
and I was talking about this today, you'd be surprised. Like number one is 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 like just goals. They're the easiest thing to do, easiest thing not to do. Right. And it's the, probably one of the most valuable things that you can connect with somebody on. Sure, and help and them see where they want to go. For most sure. People aren't playing that big of a game. And the problem is, is if you if you this is the, one of the best exercises as a leader you could do. Have people write down their goals, income, lifestyle. Like let's just say you know you're 30 now. Let's say when you're 50, what do you want that all to look like? And then have them have them write all that out. You know, like what are their today goals that they're writing down for income, things like that, and go to that like 50 year old state and be like. How, how does everything look here today? And what does it cost? And 99.9% .9 of the time, I've never done this with anybody that's gotten it right. Work your way backwards and you'll find that their income goals and targets that they have that they're operating off of today will not get them where they wanna go. Right. And so like making sure that people have like goals that are real, like, like if you need to be writing down, I make 500 grand a year today, and, but you're, making, you're writing down, I make 250, then you're gonna have a huge upset and so, like connecting with people on that level and really sure. like getting, actually caring about them. Is for I mean, that it that sounds novel, but it's but like most businesses don't. They yeah, don't care. They just treat them as a cog. Well, they, you know, hey, we're gonna put a ping pong table in the deal and a keg of beer and a yeah. dartboard and like you know turn some music on. Yeah, we care about you. But it's like all that stuff's could, great. But at the end of the day, if I can't pay my rent, if if what I'm what I'm doing here won't get me where I want to go, like three years from now, I'm gonna look back and be like, man, I'm still broke. But you know, I'm really good at ping pong. You know, <laughs> like how are you gonna serve anybody like that? You know, and we have people leave and get fired or quit or move on or whatever, and they look back. I just know they're gonna look back and be like, dude, that was a, that was a great that, that was a great ship. that was a great place for me to be. Like I like no matter how they leave, I know they'll look back at some point and go like, that was good for me to be there. Yeah. So absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good place to end. Jared yeah. Grant, ladies and gentlemen, where can we find you? Young Hustlers on YouTube? Yeah, so so we have uh, on the Cardone Zone, we rolled all of our podcasts up into one. It nice. was just easier for Too us that way. Now. So that it's the Cardone Zone on Thursdays at noon. I Jeez. do a show. That's right. Young Hustlers, <laughs> uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, you know, YouTube, just Everywhere. at Jared Glant. At Jared Glant Everywhere. on all social yeah. profiles. Yeah. Hey, man, thanks for coming on. Dude, my pleasure. You're the man. You're the man. Yeah.